thanks for checking out another video. In this one, I wanted to show you how I set up a piston for one of these boost ported engines. So this, this really isn't necessary on a standard engine, uh, but for one of these with this big boost port, you know, in that, that back wall, right? Um, what I've done is relieve this just like a, a West Bend 700 piston. If you look at a West Bend 700, you'll see that it's it's got this big, you know, crescent moon shaped cutout. And what that does is allows fuel to flow in through this port, all right, this extra port, even when you're at bottom dead center. So on a West Bend 700, they've done this because on a 510 or a 580, your piston actually comes all the way down here and closes off your transfer ports on a, uh, on a West Bend 580, right? So the 700, they did this little crescent moon shape. So even when you're at bottom dead center, you know, at, at no point are your transfer ports completely closed off. So you'll see mods. Um, where pistons have been drilled right here, right? And, and what those holes did was feed those transfer ports, you know, basically through the piston, you know, through the piston and then in to the cylinder wall and then up, you know, to the combustion chamber so um, rather than doing that you know that that airflow fuel flow through the piston all right just taking the this one large boost port right through the the bottom edge of that cylinder did this crescent moon cut out on the piston right so that's kind of common sense you know, reasoning for doing that, right? So the the next thing, right, is we gotta move these these ring staking pins, right? That's what uh, these pins right here are, ring staking pins. That holds your, your rings and that ring gap right here, right in the middle of your cylinder, right? So it's not spinning around, getting caught on a port. Well, with this one, you got a big, a big port right there in the back. So you want to move it over. You can see, all right, that ring staking pin, staking pin is right here for the rings. What I've done is remove that one, and then we're going to put a new, uh, we're going to put a new pin in there. I'll show you that in a second. So. The way I do it is this tiny little file, right? I ground, took a Dremel and a burr and ground down the, the side of the file. And all that's left is this little cutting edge on the bottom. And painstakingly, you know, manually grind out those pins. And then once they're, you know, completely gone, then I use a, a two millimeter, actually a couple different drill bits. You know, one to one to get my pilot hole started. And then uh, another one to finish it. All right, this is 17 millimeters. These uh these new uh, retaining pins, these spring pins right there. Right, they are 15 millimeters long. This is 17 millimeters long. So drill that hole. And then come in from the top. All 
right? Then put a new pin in there. Right, just like that. Get it started and you know, come back behind it and drive it in there. Okay, so we've tapped, tapped that in. All right, we got the new pin in. You can see then set it right here, it's sitting off to the side. You can see how once we install it, <clears throat> now the ring gap is going to be in between. All right, your transfer port and this new boost port. All right, so you don't have to worry about your your ring gap getting caught on one of those ports. And then after that, you just finish setting up your piston like you would, uh, you know, any other engine, any other piston. Right now, your gap's over here. All right, so that's the the killer bee, you know, boost ported cylinder, and uh, the method that I use to to relocate that that ring staking pin over, just so it doesn't have to. Um, I don't have to worry about it getting caught on that boost port. All right, All right thanks.